So I'm right now working on week two sew along for Kimberbell's spring showers. This is Jeannie from A1 Vacuum and Sewing. And um, I'm trying to get my homework done ahead of time because you just never know how crazy it's going to be at the store. So um, when we do our sew along tomorrow, I'm going to do Log Cabin 1, Toadstools, Birdhouse 1, a good puddle, no rain, no flowers. One of these might be homework as well, but I'm going to try and get through all of those in the sew along. We're probably not going to have time to do birdhouse two. So I'm going to do birdhouse two right now. That's homework for the week. It's not going to be done in the actual sew along, the three hour sew along that we're going to be doing tomorrow. So for that, um, you want to have your book. And in your book, it is going, whoops. There goes my CD. I got to tape that in here. We're going to be doing this one, a birdhouse too. So you need your uh, background fabric right here, the house fabric, and everything is all laid out here. As far as the embellishments, um, things that are going to come from your embellishment pack, you're going to need uh, black leather and you're going to need cork. And those didn't even actually come out of my embellishment pack. That came out of my overflow because I have so much stuff leftover from other projects. Um, let's go ahead and let's go to the machine. I have a piece of muslin hooped up. Uh, you're going to be doing this design in a six by 10 hoop. If you look at your little handy dandy sheet here for birdhouse two, our quilt design is going to be plant one and we're choosing the four by eight vertical. So let's go to the machine and load everything in. Okay, this is left over from my log cabin, so I'm going to go home to clear my, my screen, and I'm going to go embroidery. First thing I'm going to do is load my uh, quilting design. So the quilting design, again, from the sheet is going to be, I see how quickly I forget, uh, it's plant one. From, from me moving the camera from one side of my table to the other, I already forgot. So here's plant one, and we want four by eight vertical. Four by eight, four by eight. This is horizontal. This one's going to be vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and set that. I'm going to choose my hoop size, the correct one, because I can see right now that's my five by seven. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to choose my six by 10. It's really six and a quarter by 10 and a quarter, but we just call it six by 10. And um, I am going to take this and move it all the way to the left because my piece of fabric is wide that way. You can have your fabric long and skinny or wide and um, wide and have it go left or, you know, have it go wide this way or this way. You know what I mean, right? <laughs> okay, so we're going to put that in here. And now I'm going to add, and the design I'm adding is Birdhouse 2. And Birdhouse 2 is the one that has, I think the bird's on top. There's Birdhouse 1. This is Birdhouse 2. So go ahead and select that one. And let's make sure it's placed where it needs to be placed too. Sometimes these, they want you to move it down to the bottom of the design. So we are turning to page 41 in our instructions. And if you look, you're gonna see that the birdhouse is kind of near the bottom of the design. So I'm going to go ahead and just look and see where it says to place the design. Um, mark the center fabric. Okay, so it says right here, align block embroidery file centered from left to right and a quarter inch from the bottom of the quilt design. So that's important. We're going to take that design and I'm going to go here to edit. And I'm going to hit move and I'm going to move it down with the arrows because I don't want it to really move left or right. Okay, so it says a quarter inch from the bottom of the quilting design. Oh, let's move up then.
So your quilting design has two lines. It has the outside line and then it has the bottom line and that's what it wants us to line it up with. Do you see that? So that bottom right stem should be a little bit lower than what we have here and so it should look like this. Perfect. And I don't know, it looks like my design moved a little bit to the right, but there we go. Now I'm perfectly centered. And if you look at the bottom, I am a quarter inch from the bottom of that design. I just lined it up with, here, I'll move it up there. I just lined it, you have the, um, the outline, which is where we're gonna cut, and then you have the line that's just above it, that's your quarter inch. So I'm gonna line it up with that. Not the bottommost line, but the line right above it. And I'm not even discussing this line here, which is the six by 10 outline, work area outline. That's what it should look like. We're gonna go ahead and say, okay. I'm gonna say embroidery and let me slide my hoop on. That way I can't move out of my embroidery field. I'm in my six by 10 hoop. You can go bigger. You can't go smaller, but you can go bigger. I'm gonna say embroidery on my screen. And I have lots of room here on the left and the right. I'm gonna take this because I have some room over here. So maybe if I remove it over, I'll be able to hoop and use that spot. I might be able to, I might not be able to. Lay out, move, and I'm gonna scoot it all to the left. Perfect, I could scoot it all to the top too and I'll have some stuff down at the bottom. It's up to you, it doesn't make a difference. Whatever you wanna do, whatever you think you can utilize later on. All right, first step, first thing that's gonna do is it's gonna do a placement stitch for the batting. So go ahead and grab your batting from your stack of fabric and give it a little shot of spray to the back. Your batting piece should be cut, and that's on your little sheet here, it should be cut five by nine. And you should be spraying on the back of your batting, which is the bumpy side. The right side of your batting is the side that's a little bit smoother. Now it's the tack down. Now we're gonna trim, trim the excess batting away.
Okay, now it's the placement stitch for the background fabric. I know it's gonna go right over this. I'm gonna skip that stitch. I'm just gonna give this a little shot of spray to the back. It's my background fabric. And for me to place this down, because I moved my design so it's not centered to the hoop. If I was centered to the hoop, I would just use the little hash marks, the little embossed centering marks. So I'm, I like to fold it in quarters just to find my center. I lay it down, like to me, that's my center right there. And then I just open it up. And it should be pretty accurate. And then you can feel underneath and you should have like at least an inch, about an inch all the way around. I'm just gonna smooth that down. So since I'm not doing my placement stitch, I have to go here, I'm gonna go forward one, and that's my tack down. If you find that confusing, by all means, please do your placement line and then do your tack down. But if I can skip steps, I really like to. I think I've been babying you ladies. Been doing everything, but you know, sometimes it's nice to skip something. Next is going to be the quilting, and you can pick whatever color you want. I'm just gonna leave this cream color in, and it's gonna do the vines. And those were called, they called them, Plant One was the name of the design. So we're gonna have two rows of Plant One. And then we're gonna get into our embroidery. It's super cute. So first thing that we're gonna lay down is going to be the cork. So get your cork fabric. And you just need a little piece of it. The cork fabric you need that it calls for is one and a half inches by two inches. But quite honestly, it's, it's overly generous so many so much of the time that I just leave my cork on the big piece and I'm gonna lay this down as we go and then we'll just have even more leftover to put into our special box of Kimberbell scraps. So color doesn't make a difference. If you look in your instructions, we are now on step number one on page 41, and it wants you to stitch the post placement line and then place your post cork right side up, and then you're gonna do your tack down and you're gonna stitch close to the line. But anytime you see those boxes with the lines in them, that means that the color doesn't make a difference. So I'm just gonna leave that cream in and I'm gonna let it do my post placement and you've got to decide do you want it to go this direction or this direction I'm gonna go this direction but you can do whatever you want and I'm not even gonna spray it because it's such a little piece I'm just gonna lay it down and once it starts stitching it'll hold it there then I'm gonna trim it And then it wants you to stitch the house placement line. So let's go ahead and trim this first. And I can hear, the love of my life is home, that'd be Patrick. And he's really loud, so you might hear them too. Let me go ahead and trim that. I didn't get super close here, so I'm gonna come in again, try and get a little bit closer. 
That looks good. Next step is going to be the placement for the house. I'm going to slide this back on. And the fabric you're grabbing is that red hound's tooth check. Give it a little shot of spray to the back. Cover that whole placement line. You're gonna go ahead and this is your tack down and then we're gonna trim. Where are my snips? Again, this one said that the color didn't make a difference, so. I have so many projects I'm so excited about working on right now. If there was just uh, more hours in the day, more life to be lived. Right, and the next thing is going to be the placement line for the roof. And the roof fabric is going to be this orange stuff. Go ahead and give that a little shot of spray. I should probably lay all my pieces down and spray them all at once. Then I wouldn't have to like, all right, lay it down, spray it. And then have to, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> excuse me. Again, color does not make a difference for this. And placement stitch for the little opening to the birdhouse. And we're gonna lay down the black leather. So for the tack down, I am gonna switch it out. And I'm gonna put that dark, the dark gray. Cause that color is gonna make a difference when we stitch out the bird leg and beak detail. So I may as well put it in right now. I was thinking, why would I ever keep this piece? But I did. And now I know why. Because it's so perfect for right here. I didn't even spray it. This is bad because that just reinforces my hoarding behavior. All 
right. I'm going to go ahead and trim this. And it wants you to trim this close to the stitch again. You always want to check. See if it wants it close to the stitch or if it wants it um, as desired. Because then you're going to leave a little bit. You're not going to trim it up quite as close. All right. And then it wants to do the beak and the legs. Okay, color's going to make a difference. So I want you to pay attention to the colors that are requested from here on out. Now it wants you to put in that light minty green. You know what I love about a thread set is it just means you don't have to think. And I know this sounds really bad, but sometimes I just love not thinking. I just love just grabbing my color and it's perfect so i am using the um the spring showers thread kit right now this is the placement line for the bird and you are going to be grabbing this color right here Give it a little shot of spray. And then do the tack down. And that was uh, trimmed close to the stitch line. And then we're going to do the wing placement. Um, and it is asking for a color change. So let me go ahead and change the color first. Although I don't know if that really makes a difference. But let's just do it. I just like to do what I'm told. Sometimes I'm just such a rule follower. And sometimes I'm a rule breaker. But we'll just follow the rules right now. And here's my fabric. That's for the wings. So I'm going to give that a little shot of spray, lay that down, and we'll tack it down and trim it. I could do like four wings with that piece of fabric. Yeah, I don't know how I did it. Oh, there they are. I was going to say, but I lost my tweezers. I mean, my snips, but I found them. Okay. And let's go ahead and trim these.
Okay, let's start doing some satin stitching. First thing is the post outline. Next up is going to be the satin stitch for the house. So grab your red. After this, you're going to go ahead and you're going to put in um, your yellow. There's like a yellow and a gold in the thread kit. So I'm going to go with the one that's a little more gold. Let me 
take out the red. Oh my goodness. Do you hear Mr. Momo demanding I let him in? I think he's saying, Mommy, I'm out here. Okay, this is going to do the outline of the roof. Say no to that dog. I know. I'm weak. Okay, so we're just going to stitch out the outline of the roof. After the outline of the roof is going to be the bird decorative outline. And that's going to be in that light kind of like minty green. So cute. Okay, let's put in the pretty, pretty light mint for the bird outline. I have a big basket of UFOs underneath my sewing table. So I just moved it. Because Momo loves little den air. It's just dogs. You know how they love to be in like a little cave or a little den? So I just moved it for him so he'd have a place to lay down.
So it's doing that decorative stitch around the bird body, and then it's gonna be doing a wing decorative outline too. So it's not gonna do the satin stitch, but kind of like what it's doing right now around the body. And then we're gonna do the bird eye detail and a couple more things and then we're done. Let me change out that thread and put in that darker teal. I was investigating, uh, <laughs> I was investigating what is, what has fallen and rolled under my table. I just found a seam ripper. I've been looking for a, um, thread peel and a magic pin. And then I saw something else under there. It looked like a bobbin. So this is the wing detail. I'm going to do the eye. And then it wants to do the house detail in the cream, but I think I'm gonna do it in the same brighter or darker teal color. I think that'll look prettier. So you can do this in that like stone color it's calling for or else I'm going to do mine in the darker teal because it just looks prettier to me. And then there is one more step, but it says not to stitch it. It is the design placement line do not stitch. Which always confused me because why don't they just not put it in the design? That's what I think, but it's there. I don't know why they need it. Once we're done with this, you are done and you are ready to take this and you can press it and trim it. But I'm gonna leave it on here because I'm gonna re-hoop and put in the next, um, the next birdhouse. I'll have enough fabric to the right of it to hoop it up for the next birdhouse. Birdhouse one. This reminds me of, do you remember Spirograph? I thought that was like the best toy ever. And aside from pressing and trimming and adding some embellishments, we are done with Birdhouse 2. Thanks!